Friends is one of the most popular and enduring TV shows of all time, with a loyal legion of fans who still obsessively stream it on a daily basis and know every single episode inside and out from literally dozens of viewings. And it follows that any hit TV series with such a passionate fanbase is sure to generate a gold mine of fan theories both plausible and, well, not so much. These fan theories are among the most patently absurd, fascinating, and creative you're ever likely to see regarding the show Friends. So with that in mind, I'm Will for Culture, and here are the 10 most insane Friends fan theories. Number 10, Ross and Rachel's relationship is cursed because Ross opened an umbrella inside Central Perk. Friends' focal relationship has always been the on and off love story between Ross and Rachel, defined by all the makeups, breakups, and sitcommy misunderstandings you'd expect. But one devastating fan theory suggests that there's one very clear reason why their romance could never be simple, and it all stems back to the first few minutes of the series' first ever episode. When Rachel arrives in Central Perk and introduces herself to Ross, he accidentally opens his umbrella, and as we all know, superstition dictates that opening an umbrella indoors will make bad luck rain down upon you. The original version of the theory even suggests that they had seven years of bad luck as a result, with Rachel becoming pregnant in season eight, seemingly bringing their bad luck spell to an end. But I'm pretty sure the whole seven years thing is for breaking a mirror, not opening an umbrella. Nevertheless, Ross accidentally cursing himself would certainly explain the over the odds amount of ups and downs his relationship with Rachel had over the show's 10 seasons. Number 9. Eating Mocklets Made Monica Infertile in the show's final season, Monica and Chandler finally end up having twins via a surrogate. And one brutal fan theory has an explanation for the backstory behind Monica's fertility issues, which goes all the way back to the early season two episode, The One with the List. In the episode, Monica has a job interview where she has to prepare some desserts using the new chocolate substitute, Mocklet. It's vile, of course, with Phoebe describing it as what evil must taste like. And in a follow-up interview, Monica learns from the interviewer that Mocklet never ended up getting FDA approval, before the interviewer expresses scarcely veiled concern at how much Mocklet she may have consumed while cooking. Given that Rachel and Phoebe are both seen spitting out the Mocklet dishes they try out for Monica, while Monica admitted to eating some, it's entirely possible that the synthetic chocolate was toxic enough to wreak havoc on her uterus. Number 8. Ben Geller Has Psychic Abilities Ross's son Ben mysteriously disappeared from the show altogether midway through season 8, though there is a crazy theory suggesting that he actually had some unique supernatural abilities hiding in plain sight. In the season 3 episode, the one with the giant poking device, Monica memorably bumps Ben's head while playing with him, after which Ben appears to keep repeating the incriminating phase, Monica Bang. Except the theory implies that Ben is actually saying Monica Bing, predicting that she would eventually go on to marry Chandler. Honestly, if you listen to how Ben enunciates the supposed word bang, it doesn't sound that implausible, even if there's no way the writers had things planned out this far in advance. But there is an amusing piece of supporting evidence. The season two episode, the one where Old Yeller dies, reveals that Ben's first words was Yemen, which may well be foreshadowing the season four episode, the one with all the rugby, where Chandler famously pretends to move to Yemen to escape Janice. The logic is flawless, clearly. Number seven, Chandler still loves his ex-girlfriend, Kathy. Though Chandler, of course, ended up settling down with Monica, this heartbreaking theory suggests things might not be quite so simple, and that Chandler was still in love with somebody else when he tied the knot. You may remember Chandler's season four girlfriend, Kathy, who Chandler fell head over heels for even when she was still dating Joey. But Chandler is eventually dumped by Kathy, leaving him totally heartbroken, and apparently a little more so than anyone quite realized. You see, in the season eight episode, the one with the Halloween party, he dresses up in the iconic pink bunny costume due to his favorite childhood book being the Velveteen Rabbit. Except an infatuated Chandler originally bought Kathy an expensive first edition of the Velveteen Rabbit for her birthday, which also happened to be her favorite childhood book as well. What are the chances that both of them had the same favorite childhood book, and moreover that Chandler wouldn't even mention this to her? The only logical answer is that Chandler is so in love with Kathy he made her favorite book his own, and the fact he continues to maintain this lie while with Monica suggests that those feelings still exist. Exist. Number six, Rachel dated Ben from Parks and Recreation. 
In the season 7 episode, the one with all the candy, Monica starts listing all the men who Rachel has slept with on a first date, and one of those names is the full name of Ben from Parks and Recreation. Ben was a major character on that show, as played by Adam Scott, who eventually becomes protagonist Leslie Nope's husband. Some quick maths would make Rachel roughly 29 years old in season 7, while Ben would have been 26, which actually totally checks out. It's not all that inconceivable that Ben stopped off in New York and had a quick fling with Rachel before arriving arriving in Pawnee, Indiana. Number 5. The entire series was an elaborate Starbucks commercial there are some cute fan theories that make some basic semblance of sense, and then there are those theories so crazy you just have to admire the creativity behind them. This glorious tinfoil hat wearing theory from writer Alex Baker implies that Friends was actually a secret branding exercise for Coffee Empire Starbucks. Though we don't see any actual Starbucks specific product placement in the show, Baker argues that Friends aimed to more broadly change attitudes, getting people out of pubs, as popularized in the sitcom Cheers, and into coffee chains. The evidence well, Rachel's surname is green and Starbucks' logo is green. Her hair also looks similar to the woman in the Starbucks logo. Ross and Monica's surname is Geller, which is derived from the German Gellen, which means to yell. And Starbucks is renowned for yelling customers' names when an order is ready. Again, it's totally crazy and almost definitely not true. In fact, no, it's definitely not true. Number 4. Monica was the result of her mother's extramarital affair. Ross and Monica's mother Judy makes little effort to disguise the fact that Ross is her favourite child, openly mocking her daughter routinely over the course of the show. And one theory explaining this states that Judy is hostile to Monica because she was the accidental result of a pre-marital affair. To put it bluntly, Monica's father isn't Jack, and a mere sight of Monica reminds Judy of her indiscretion. The theory further implies that this may explain why little reference is ever made to Monica being half-Jewish, compared to Ross, whose faith is brought up several times. Given the likelihood that Judy, who is herself not a Jew, could reasonably have had an affair with a non-Jewish man, it makes a certain amount of sense. Number 3. Ross is a men's rights activist This thoughtful theory is nothing if not a theory for our current times. It states that Ross is most likely a men's rights activist. And to be clear, this theory is not talking about divorced men who simply want more access to their kids, but men who use that platform of apparent authenticity to attack and demean women. The apparent proof is evident through Ross's childish, even misogynistic and abusive behaviour which, while laughed off during Friends' original airing, perhaps isn't quite so funny under a modern microscope. There's his constant nice guy isms, his controlling attitude, and regular mansplaining to Rachel, his casual reinforcement of traditional masculine stereotypes, and of course the infamous tanning incident where he patronizingly refuses to accept help from a female employee. Those are just a few examples this theory claims to use as evidence, and though Ross certainly did have his progressive moments throughout the show, his personality dovetails sometimes into the typical MRA stereotype to give this theory a little bit of credence among some circles. Number 2. Joey and Phoebe were secret lovers the entire time This theory is so brilliant it actually almost became a reality, and was championed by none other than Joey himself, Matt LeBlanc. In a 2015 interview, he confirmed that the idea was floated that Joey and Phoebe had actually been involved in a secret sexual relationship, with the idea that a flashback-filled episode would reveal all the close calls where they were nearly caught in prior episodes. Matt said of the idea, we'd go back and shoot all the historical scenes, and just a moment before that every everyone realises there's Joey and Phoebe coming out of a broom closet together, but they were like, nah. It is a great idea and could have recontextualised the entire show in an extremely entertaining way, though there also would have been a huge dramatic risk. Had it paid off before Mike came into the picture though, this could have been game changing in the best possible way. However, if you're so inclined, there's no reason for fans to believe that Joey and Phoebe weren't sleeping together in their own headcanon. Number 1. Frank Jr.'s wife, Alice, is a sex offender Alice is the wife of Phoebe's half-brother Frank Jr., and because Alice couldn't just be the older woman in the relationship, she also happened to be Frank's home economics high school teacher. With Alice being an entire 26 years older, the more worrying implication is the possibility that Alice entered into a sexual relationship with Frank when he was still a minor, or at an age where the power dynamic between them could legally still be considered abuse. And while Phoebe eventually becomes a surrogate for the two, apparently due to Alice being too old to conceive, the fact that they over the possibility of adoption perhaps suggests that Alex is a convicted sex offender, which would disqualify her from ever pursuing adoption. It's pretty weird to even consider, though given what little information the show gives us, it is technically plausible. 
And there you have it folks, the 10 most insane Friends fan theories. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at YouSlyDogU. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.